Well, Clint Eastwood and Steven Spielberg's new film Hereafter opened in Britain this weekend. The three main characters all experience aspects of the afterlife. So our final big question, is there life after death? Uh, Mohammed, you know for a fact that there is life after death, don't Definitely. you? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where's, 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 where's your, if, I don't, if you don't mind me asking, where's your evidence? Or well, my evidence. Yeah. First of all, we as a human being consist of bodies and souls. And when we die, we only bury the bodies. Where's the soul? That's, that's, the, that's the life after death. Mm. So the soul that we don't bury, the soul that we don't know what it is, right? We only bury the body. Mm. So that soul is still alive. So right. this is the first <coughs> phase of life after death. That's so fine. there is life after death. Right. As long as we cannot control the soul and we cannot kill the soul, then that means the soul is alive. So we're not just a cells and neurotransmitters and DNA, we're, we're more than that. There's something, there's an entity above that which transcends that, yeah. Yes. A soul, yeah. Well, yeah. But, but that's goes just, on. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, God created us, as I said, from live, uh, body and souls, right? And he, when he created us, in two stages. First, the body in our mother's womb for a few months, then the soul joins it. The separation of the, of the soul from the body is what we call death, but this separation is temporary. And the life goes into, or the life of the soul goes into what we call transient life. Mm -hmm. Then when the hereafter comes, then God creates us again. Paradise or? Or hell. Right. Exactly. And paradise, the only people in paradise are, are Muslims, right? You've always asked me that. It seems you were it. <laughs> well, we were talking about it beforehand. It's good. But you said there's, still, you I mean, said there's still a chance. Yeah. If I convert, I have a chance. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. every time you see me, you ask me this. I think you're worried, and that is good. I'm you're worried. Getting the, you're getting I am the worried. Message. You're getting the message. I might end up with Nick Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's good. You're getting the message. Yeah. So yeah. what you have to do, mm. just in case. Convert. Just, no, no, just, no, no, just in case. Study it. Right. Just, just study it. We could sit together. Right? And it won't take me long to convert you, because you're a clever man, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sit together and discuss it. It's a good story. It's, it's we'll we'll discuss it. I mean, we'll discuss it. Read the, the Quran, see, is this God's word or not? And that would be a chance for me to, to have uh, paradise. This, this gentleman has evidence. The gentleman beside you have, has evidence that there is life after death. Um, let me introduce him. He is um, Stephen Upton. Uh, explain who you are, Stephen, what you do. Good morning. Do. I'm a spiritualist minister and uh, communications director for the Spiritualist National Union. Uh, what my colleague here has stated is remarkably similar to the spiritualist viewpoint. He's not going to like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the physical body that dies. Our intelligence, our soul, continues beyond death. Where spiritualism goes further is we believe it's possible to breach that barrier and to communicate. Are you 100% sure that you have breached that barrier and you, you, people in your union have spoken or been spoken to by people who are dead? Yes. It's unbelievable, is that? Sorry? It's, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. I'm hearing voices right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a rational, a rational person you. that is absolutely unbelievable. Why is it, why is I ask these religious people, show me somebody who has come back from the dead or show me the entrance to, the, to heaven or whatever, and I would believe you. But it's, religion uses this, it uses this as a means of power because then they know they can control their... Uh, parishioners well, or whatever. Firstly, Stephen. it's not a controlling religion, uh, uh, it's an give empowering us a, religion. Give us an example of something. That Over a period of best part of 40 years, I've witnessed what to me has become an overwhelming body of evidence that to me it becomes proof, personal proof. The proof I've received would not convince the gentleman behind me. He needs his own personal proof. What spiritualism does... Have you heard voices? Yes, I have. Not in my head. I'm not what's known as a clairaudient medium. I've heard voices under conditions that we'd call direct or independent voice phenomena. Where are the voices coming from? They were coming from the, the, the minds of people who have died. Where are these people now? They're in a place that we would term of as the spirit world. He would term of as maybe heaven. The label is irrelevant to us. Are they having, I mean, are they, is it a blissful place that they're coming from? Or it is... depends largely upon how they've lived their life here. Right. We teach personal responsibility in how you live your life, regardless of your religious beliefs. We don't believe only spiritualists go to heaven. We believe good people go to heaven, regardless of their belief system. It's how you live your life determines where you go. Bishop, Bishop Stephen, it, it, this is, uh, answer the question. Go on. Is there life after death? I don't know. You're, but you're a... <laughs> but I have you're not a... died. <laughs> Oh, 
Mrs. Purple Shirt. I have not You're died. A... Let me just say what you I do believe. You don't know. I believe <laughs> in the eternal nature of God's love, and that is within us. And I, there's something about the soul. I'm halfway there with, with our, our, our Muslim friend there. But the soul does transcend life itself. But I am very worried about the language we use about life <laughs> after death with all this sort of um, bodily stuff, uh, you know, paradise with people walking around in green pastures and so on. Come on, we're actually dead. I don't know what that life is going to be if there is a life after death. I don't know how my soul will actually live on beyond me. All I know is I have to trust in that that love is eternal and the God I believe in will enable that soul of mine, that love, to continue beyond death. But how and why, I do not know. But and in a way, I don't care. You don't... I'm going to trust in a God who's loving enough to make it OK. Right. Um, my Michael Marsh from the Merseyside Skeptics. Yes, well, I mean, my, my opinion would be probably closer to the to bishops there. I mean, I know Stephen was mentioning, um, well, he's the communications director of a spiritualist church who mm. communicates with the dead, so that's a very interesting job, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> the, the, the ways in which the proof is gathered through spiritualist churches um, are indistinguishable from the ways that um, psychological magicians, people like Darren Brown, can, can do. I mean, they're exactly replicable. They're, there's no, they're not counting as evidence. Oh, and when you ask um, our, our Muslim friend for evidence, again, what we get is a story. We get a very nice story, but it wasn't evidence. There's no evidence behind it. Every single instance I've seen of People like Darren Brown, when they've uh, performed their uh, illusions, uh, would not meet the stringent test that we would put on as uh, to a te what we'd call a test science or a test sitting. I, I've been to two spiritual churches. I've seen um, the, the same type of evidence that's put forward, and there's nothing there that convinces me that there's anything more than over what psychological tricks, magic tricks that are, that are being done. I've also been to many spiritual churches, and at times I've also felt that the so-called evidence provided didn't meet the standard. But I've now collected what has become an overwhelming body of evidence for myself personally over the best part of a 40-year period. I haven't just visited one or two churches. I haven't seen one or two mediums. But it's become convincing to me personally, and this is the nature of it. It's personal evidence. It's not empirical, but it's become totally convincing to me. OK, that's a, audience members. Hello to you. Hiya. Um, I think what we have to understand is if we take an experiment or we look at the reality around us, you can't come to the conclusion that there is life after death. For Muslims, the way we try and establish whether there's life after death or not is looking at the scripture. And is the scripture itself rationally justifiable? Can we test the veracity of that scripture? If it's from the creator, if it's from God, and then God informs you of life after death, then you can trust that scripture. If you believe but it's from God, That's yes. right, but just trying to argue from reality, you, it's going to be subjective, it's going to be personal. That's the, that, that's, the, that's the key to this. No. The fundamental, fundamental thing about believing and, and uh, de dedicating the way you live your life with uh, regard to the afterlife is that it very much devalues the life you've got here. If, uh, if you are yeah. Yeah. spending your time worrying yeah. about where you'll be in an eternal hereafter, then you're not living your life here. And you, this is why we have examples where you know, people will, will denigrate gay couples who want to adopt children because their, their belief that that's what gets them into the afterlife says that homosexuality well, is going to be atrocity because they believe they're going to be rewarded Absolutely. for those. We have holy wars because this is how people think they will get into so heaven. There's and a point there, some of it, isn't there? If we, if we it, it, you know, this is holding us back. If we want true justice, we live, we live for the, fa the life that we have now and make the best of it. It would, it would be a better world, people argue, if we threw away these fairy tale notions of a life after death. So some people argue. Well, I agree that the only certainty that we do have is that we have the here and now. And I believe you should live your life knowing that you will be judged in the here and now. Whatever you do, the ramifications are held here and now, and that you will be accountable to the here and now. The only reason why I would like to have hope, there is some in another life. I work with so many victims of crime who've seen their children murdered and for them they want to hope that they will be reunited with them it's because they comfort. never said goodbye. Yeah. Right. They mm. never said goodbye and yeah. also that the perpetrator of that crime will answer to God. Yeah. But I want them to answer to here now in our courts as well as to God in the afterlife. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very, that very good point that it's, hello sir, it's a huge and massive comfort comfort to people. I'd just like to make a comment that this gentleman said. As a Christian, he said no-one's come back from the dead. 
Now, we believe as Christians that Christ came back from the dead, Jesus came back from the dead, and I'm surprised that the bishop didn't uh, address that. I, I mean, the question is actually, is there an afterlife? Is there life after death? I am, um, you know, don't did, know did what Did Jesus that come life back is. from the dead? Oh, Jesus r rose, certainly from the dead. But the Literally? Zap, the, yes. uh, um, <laughs> I would need to be able to spend another 20 minutes doing that particular question, because uh, it's another question for this programme, whether the, there was a physical resurrection or whether it was a resurrection. But something remarkable happened, which uh, a man who was crucified on the cross died, uh, suddenly, three days later, he transformed his risen body, transformed the world. Something remarkable happened. I don't know what life after death is. I suspect nobody here knows it, despite all that everybody says. We have these pictures and, the and films and so on. All I know is that I have to trust in a God who is love, and that love will transcend death. Uh, Penny, Penny, um, we've uh, we had people from uh, your group in on the program a couple of weeks ago. Sea of Faith, right. Christians who don't believe in the existence of God, and uh, what what do you think about that? Obviously, well, I, you, you I don't believe in heaven. Obviously, you don't believe in right. life after death, but you believe in the teachings of Jesus. Well, first of all, our network I think has been misrepresented because, in fact, we are not an organisation. We don't have a party line. We don't have a creed. You all believe different things. But yeah. we believe different things, and we enjoy discussing interesting questions like this, and we do it in a place of safety. But Unlike I think this. it's just wonderful to be alive here and now, and I feel... <laughs> this is really what we should be dealing with. Celebrate life. Not looking for pie in the sky when we die. I think that's, that's the really unfortunate thing, and I think the bishop referred to eternal, I think he used that in one of his phrases, and I think the church has been confused for a very long time between everlasting life, life in the hereafter, and eternal life, which we can enjoy now and should be going about doing. Angela Epstein. Yeah, I think one of the fundamental points that hasn't really been hit on here is the fact that faith and proof are mutually exclusive. So if you have faith, you don't demand proof. It's enough that that should, mm. that should be your, your, your <coughs> conviction. Yeah. If you'll just give me a moment. I also think that because the world is such a beautiful and complex place, and you look at the complexity of the human body, this was not some random uh, sort of accident that happened when a meteorite crashed into the earth and created life or a big bang. There has to be some higher being, or, or certainly that's how I feel. Now, my faith, I mean, mine's informed by Judaism, is that this world is seen as a, an almost a waiting room for the world to come. So whatever we achieve here, we should always strive to be the best we can, to be good people, to be kind. Yes, make the most of the here and now, but in doing so, not only for our own personal benefit and for the benefits of society, but that will accord us a place in the world to come where we'll be rewarded for having been a good person on earth. Uh, uh, what do you uh, mean by the world to come? And what do you mean by rewards? I mean, I, I, rewards. I, the, the world to come? The world to a come. A globe? The world you know, to come. A place is a place. It's not for me to second guess the Almighty in terms of how he perceives what happens when we die. I just think that we don't reach an abyss and then drop off the end uh, of what, it. What do you mean by rewards? I mean, all this language worries me. Why because, should it worry you? Know, you? It's be, an acknowledgement be, of having lived a good life, of having lived a good life as a human being. Can't you actually trust that love of God and leave it there? You know, well, yeah. Ajman, Ajman Mishra, um, yes, some people argue that there is a form of eternal life if we are lucky enough to be able to pass on our DNA. Your, you have children, I, I do too. Our DNA has been around, yours and mine, since we came out of the trees, since we came out of the swamp. That is, an, in a sense, that information is a kind of eternal life, isn't it? Each and every one of us can t uh, have a very unique, individualised soul. Which goes back... No, I'm talking no. about the scientific Correct. stuff I'm here, just DNA, but just putting it them together. You said soul. Each and, each and every one of us, and what makes you think soul is not scientific. Um, so each and every one of us have one. We don't pass them on to somebody else. That lives forever. That's oh. the first thing. Secondly, uh, I don't know, with due respect to the bishop, I think in his retirement he may have lost his faith in that process. Not at and all. Not, uh, <laughs> may, have, uh, may have got co quite confused, but quite, uh, no, quite no, taken aback. <laughs> bishop, quite, quite taken aback by our Jewish friend over there who said that, and the, uh, the description you've given is very identical to Islamic one, where we believe in the hereafter, we believe that there is a life. But just for the sake of argument, imagine I don't believe in one. Imagine there is no here, hereafter. What have I lost by believing in the hereafter while I lived on this earth? What I did was I tried to live, uh, live a decent life. In my understanding of decency, you, according to Islam, I didn't drink, I didn't take any drugs. Let, I didn't, no, most no, people no, le, lead a decent no, life I understand, but let me, let me develop my argument. So in this life, in my definition of decency, 
I didn't do five or six things. That's all I didn't do. In the hereafter, because I believe my hereafter would be judged by some of those decency indicators, I would be rewarded if there is a hereafter. If there isn't one, for example, then that's not a problem. But those of us who don't believe in the hereafter, if there is one, we would be in big trouble just because we indulge ourselves in five or six extra things. So in, 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 pro, in balance of prob no, it's, but it's in, in, in balance of probability, because you can't prove it. I thought, I thought, I thought, everybody else. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought gambling was haram. I thought you weren't allowed to gamble here. This is a bet. Monitor, isn't it? Monitor gambling is different. But Nikki, you know, in balance of probability in life, we, think, we do things that on the basis of what is more likely. On top of, of course, certainty for yourself individually, I certainly believe there is a hereafter in which greater justice would be given, greater rewards would be given for people who have been good. Only that's fair. That's what I believe in. And that's what, of course, Islam says. But to say that I can prove it, that's an impossible task. I can't prove it. Gentlemen, there, yeah. It, it, was, it was stated that a soul is scientific. Now, surely the scientific de uh, definition of a soul is, is a state of human consciousness. And surely science proves the human consciousness comes from essentially the mind, which is part of the brain. So therefore, when no, you die, the, the and your body the, dies, the, the, that ends that the, link between human consciousness. And so the death of a person is also the, the, the death the embryo of body comes, and soul. The embryo comes to life without the brain coming to life first. You know, the heart starts pumping without any brain function. It just starts pumping. So the unique thing about it is, how does it happen? Listen, Majma, my heart, my heart is pumping right now because I have to say, all the debates continue on our message board. Thank you so much for watching. Join us next week from York. Goodbye from everyone here in Bury. Thank you. <laughs>